Hi guys and welcome back to another video where we're looking at my predictions for the Premier League this weekend. We're, we're going to end up laughing at them because I know I've got a few wrong already, but let's watch the video um, and see how I did. Anyway, we'll jump straight into it and the first off is Leicester-Arsenal. Massive game this weekend. Both teams have actually seen a pretty good turnaround in form, especially Arsenal. They got battered in the first few games of the season and then since losing 5-0 to Manchester City, they have not lost in all competitions. Um, there's a bit of a turnaround going on and as for Leicester, they've had a couple of... That's the nicest thing you'll ever hear me say about Arsenal. But moving on. Good results recently, but both teams can look shaky in defence at times. So I'm going to go for a two-all draw. I think both of them have got very good attackers. Aubameyang's in good form. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go for a 2-2 two -two draw at the King Power Stadium on Saturday lunchtime. 2-2 um, two -two I've gone for. Yeah, that's a very, very good win for Arsenal. But oh my God, Leicester. They're just... They're doing this inconsistent Leicester thing again. Every time we think they've turned a corner, like the brilliant win against United, they go and do this. Um, but yeah, more credit goes to Arsenal. That's not the worst prediction in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm not having all the abuse of that in the comment section. I don't think it was too bad. It's a little bit of a shock that Arsenal went to Leicester and kept a clean sheet. Not that they won, but kept a clean sheet. So um, I don't think that one's so bad. All right. um, next up, Watford against Southampton. I thought Watford would probably not survive the season and come out too well. Having said that, there have been some good results recently and the 5-2 win at Everton was astonishingly good. Like proving that they can find the back of the net when they want to. Um, even though Everton did capitulate and more on them a little bit later. They play against Southampton who are just so inconsistent. They have one good result, you know, they drew at home to Manchester United, the way to Manchester City and then have some absolute shockers as well. And for that reason, I'm going to go for a 3-1 victory for Watford. Um, oh, I said so much about Watford finding the back of the net and they didn't even score. Oh, you know what? I actually just watched the highlights. What a goal from Shea Adams. I got the one bit right from Southampton, but the rest of it's absolute rubbish. I'm just, the, the more I watch this back, the more I realize I'm chatting crap. Oh, I thought they'd score three goals. Wow. Okay, well, they lost 1-0, so there goes that one. I'm, I think I'm literally zero for two at the minute. Next up, Liverpool against Brighton. I think Brighton won there last season and there are some good results for Brighton this season. Graham Potter doing a very good job. I should have called it quits there. I knew it. I know exactly what's coming. I should have just said Brighton are very good. They're doing a good job. They're going to get result at Liverpool. But there's no way you could blame me for after the performance they put in against United for, <laughs> for thinking, I think I said 3-0. They're coming up against Liverpool, who are in the form of their lives, especially after that win at Old Trafford. So I'm sorry, Brighton fans. I'm going to go for a 3-0 victory. I knew it. I did, I'm just an idiot. Uh, I, look, I look stupid now. At the time, that was reasonable. There is no way, after what Liverpool did, that anyone would have said, you know what, Brighton have got a chance here. And they came back from 2-0 down. What a performance. My God. Yeah, I'm not even disappointed to get that one wrong. Um, next up, and Newcastle against Chelsea. The upturn in form that was expected after all the good news around Newcastle selling the club is not really happening and I can't see how they're going to turn around and form just yet, especially not without a new manager in charge. So yeah, Chelsea are top of the league for a reason because they're a ridiculously good team at the minute. Thomas Tuchel has them so well drilled and against the Newcastle side who very seldom find the back of the net, I'm going to go for a 2-0 victory to Chelsea. Not much to say there. That one makes me look... Sort of intelligent. Oh, it was 3-0. Yeah, 3-0, 2-0. I got the main bits right. The main bit being Newcastle not finding the back of the net. Next up then, Manchester City against Crystal Palace. Whew. I know City have a few slip-ups at home, but this is a very good Manchester City team. Regardless of losing um, on penalties to West Ham in the Carabao Cup, Crystal Palace has some good performances, but this again is a very, very tough away day. I think Vieira's got Palace looking okay in parts this season. But Manchester City are very, very good, especially at home. I'm going for a 3-1 victory. I think Palace will be able to sneak a goal, but 3-1 to Manchester City. Again, this is like with a Liverpool result. I do not know who's been able to call this one. Of course, the red card completely changes it. So I think I'm let off a little bit there. Cut me a bit of slack with the red card. Um, but as for Crystal Palace under Vieira, they are doing very well. But to go away to Manchester City and win 2-0... There's no way you would have predicted that at all. No way. And I think, obviously, it was given offside because it was offside from Phil Foden. But Gabriel Jesus scores that equaliser. Things may be a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I, there's nothing I can do about that. The game changed after the red card. Um, next up, 
I, I'm a big fan of what Brentford have done this season in the Premier League. They've come in, they've been a uh, breath of fresh air is the term that are always used when a team comes up and does something interesting like Wolves or Leeds or Sheffield United in the last few years. Brentford have been very good. They haven't, we haven't seen them tested and a poor run of form just yet. That's kind of what they're on at the minute. Without winning three, two defeats in the last two games and they head to Burnley who have yet to win a game this season. I think that's going to change. I don't know why. There's something about it which makes me think Brentford haven't, like I said, come through a patch of bad form just yet. And I think Burnley are going to get the win at Turf Moor. I'm going to go for a 1-0 victory. Quite possibly the most Burnley result ever. I actually feel quite smart now. I feel a little bit smug. For all the reasons that I said is exactly what happened. Yes, it was, it was actually a 3-1. Um, a 3-1 victory for Burnley. That's quite unusual for them to score so many goals, especially in the first half. Um, but for every reason that I said, I I feel like that was destined to happen. And Brentford, yeah, heading into a bit of bad form. We don't know how long this could go on for. This is this is brand new territory for them in the Premier League. Um, all right, moving on then to Tottenham Manchester United. Whew, this is a tough game. United coming off the back of that. App. I'm not even sure I want to watch this one. Tottenham Manchester United. I know I went positive. I remember thinking that Tottenham were going to win, could win. I went super positive and I think I think Roy Keane said it. It was the perfect game for Manchester United to, to, to play after losing to Liverpool. And this is it. Ah, oh, so we have to watch this. Absolute slapping. That's the only way I can describe it against Liverpool. No one knows what's happening with the management. Is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer going to be around for the rest of the season? Doesn't look like it. It looks as though he's been given the Tottenham game. And a bad result here could spell the end of his time as Manchester United manager. On the flip side, just watch this video, but change Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for Nuno. This, this is what's happening. Manager. On the flip side, Tottenham aren't exactly in the greatest form either. It's, a, it, it's at Tottenham Stadium, which makes me think they'll have a little bit more of a chance. I don't know why I thought that. That's just me. That's just me being overly confident. Not even overly confident, overly hopeful, I think is the word. Uh, you know, as many people suggesting that United are down in the dumps after losing 5-0, this, that and the other. Because Tottenham, like I mentioned, aren't great either. My head says one all, but my heart says 2-1 to Tottenham. Only just. Um, if I was being super biased, I'd say 3-0 Tottenham, they'll win easy. But it, I'm not being biased and it's not that easy. Um, after the results at the weekend, obviously the Spurs losing to West Ham. But God, United must be... There's either going to be action or they're going to be absolutely down in the dumps. So yeah, I'm going for a 2-1 victory for Spurs. That'll probably come back to bite me in the arse. Um, it did. It came back to bite me in the arse big time. Tottenham were just... Oh, they were so poor. That like Manchester United were very good, but it was made far, far too easy by such a... What's the word? Dispirited. Like, if, if, if Tottenham go next weekend away to Everton and do what United did after a heavy defeat, then great, but I can't see it happening in all honesty. Whoa. Oh, God, they were shocking. That, and that prediction makes me look even more ridiculous. 2-1 to Tottenham. Why would I ever think that? I, I was trying to be positive. I should have just listened to the comment section. Gone for a Manchester United win, and here we are, me looking like an idiot, after a 3-0 victory. Next up, Norwich against Leeds. <sighs> this has got low-scoring affair written all over it. The only good news for Leeds is that Norwich are one of the few teams that are worse than them this season. Just 10 goals between both teams all season in the Premier League in a combined 18 games. Tells you all you need to know about this fixture, and I think Leeds are going to win 1-0. Not the most interesting game. Sorry, guys. Okay, that was a 2-1. That was kind of close. There was a bit of a... a uh, a bit of a difference in the scoreline, but I got the correct result of, of Leeds winning. I just, I'm sorry, I just don't hold much hope for Norwich. And I just think even though Leeds aren't on the greatest form at all this season, yeah, that one was never going to go their way. Um, Aston Villa, West Ham. Villa, whew, after winning at Old Trafford, they've lost three in a row. And West Ham are on top of the world at the moment. This week has seen them beat Tottenham in a, North Lon in a London derby, even. Beat Manchester City on penalties in the League Cup. I think West Ham are flying at the minute and they're going to win 2-1 at Villa Park and only make things worse for Dean Smith at Aston. That's me being generous. I think that to predict a 4-1 would have been very difficult, but West Ham are going to win. They are in such ridiculously good form, driven by Declan Rice in midfield. They're so good at the minute. I wouldn't, no matter who West Ham were playing this weekend, I wouldn't have bet against them at all. And last but not least, Wolves against Everton. We spoke about Wolves recently. Ah. 
We're doing this on a Monday. Wolves and Everton have not played yet. Sometimes I think, God, this Matt guy chats an awful lot of waffle. But other times I feel like I got a couple right. Did I get any scores right? None. Absolutely none. A couple of correct results in terms of the team winning, but... Um, but yeah, but no scores, right? I think the closest I got was Chelsea against Newcastle. Anyway, give a massive thumbs up down below and let us know if you want to see more of this kind of stuff as well. But until next time, I will see you guys later.